Now, this climate issue played out in the corridors of Parliament House this morning with an impromptu debate in the press gallery. Have a look. What a load of rubbish. Of what sense. an absolute Barnaby. load of pig manure. He's Tell going to reach out to you. Why? He's going to reach out to the coal mines. Don't worry, fellas. We're reaching out to what, you. Why We're reaching work? out to you and saying you're going to lose your job. We're going to reach out to the agricultural sector. Reaching out. Is that how you're going to do well, it? If you're going to have an impromptu why debate, don't you, Why don't you say <laughs> how, you're going to, like how much are you when, going to reduce the cattle well, herd well, by? You, you, you how talk, much are you going to reduce the cattle herd by? You talked about drought how much in this morning's interview. Now... Now, is there a how much are you going to reduce a change in climate and drought? How much are you going to reduce the calorie? Is there a link between you know what? You know how much are you going to reduce? Why meat and livestock Australia? They know why don't they you do know the answer? Need, well, they don't need. Why to don't you know well, the we answer? We don't need to reduce the Why do you announce a policy and not know how you're going to do it? Lots of heat there. Was there any light? Joining me now from Canberra is the former Nationals leader, former Deputy Prime Minister Barnaby Joyce. Thanks for joining me, Barnaby. Um, look, You're I know you Chris. can't resist a, a good debate, especially on this issue, but is, is that the way to settle these issues? Are you going to get very far having a slangy match with Joel Fitzgibbon in the corridor? Well, you can't do much, Chris, when someone crashes your doorstop. I mean, that's something I haven't experienced since Senator Bill Heffernan was around here. But, you know, if he's going to walk in, you know, if the, the fly's going to walk across the spider's web, then does, don't, don't complain if you get bitten. You know, it's, it's everything he said there was basically rubbish. In the IPCC report that was brought down in Korea, which was the most latest, they talk directly about a reduction in the beef herd. Uh, a beast produces around about 70, 70 to 120 uh, kilograms of methane a year. Um, the, we've got 28 million head of cattle in Australia. Uh, we, we, that's, it's, uh, methane is about 23 times uh, carbon dioxide as a, as a greenhouse effect. So. The, the way the IPCC, and I'll listen to them about what their, their intentions are long before I listen to Joel, is that they say you've got to reduce your, your cattle herd. Now, for me in a regional area, um, that really rings alarm bells because it's not just beef, it's also dairy, it's also pigs. Uh, even you and I produce methane, Chris, about 0.12 of a kilogram a year. Or maybe we're going to have to get rid of a few of the people as well. I don't know how this works. No, don't start and me on this. You want, you, you want to start with pets. You want to start with pets. Check out the carbon footprint of your household dog. Yeah, well, this is how ridiculous... And see, Chris, I've got, I've got a good memory, and I remember the last time we had this debate, actually... And I'll always, you know, chide our own side when they do it wrong. There was this... Uh, sort of collusion between the federal government and the state governments. Uh, and I remember Peter Costello going on the 7.30 report, you know, claiming responsibility for this, and we got the vegetation management laws. So in the country, we paid for the equation to bring down carbon emissions because they basically, through the states, because states don't have to compensate, Commonwealth does, as you know, they basically came in and said, well, the way we're going to meet our obligations to stop farmers from managing their land and stop farmers from being able to manage their vegetation... And um, the result of that is we were divested of a private asset without payment, which is socialism. I just don't agree to that. Well, there and is now no we see this coming down the track to us again. Yeah, well, there's no doubt, Barnaby Joyce, that if we were to get to this country to net zero emissions by 2050, we'd have to start the, the, the debate way outside of the energy sector. So much has been focused on energy until now, but there'd have to be massive changes in the transport sector and in agriculture, not to of mention course. other areas. And we haven't heard any of details course. from... Yeah, any, so, either, any side of politics as to how this would be done. Uh, and that's what's so uh, disingenuous about it and dishonest. But you can bet your life the bureaucrats will be hard at work because this is the ideal socialist scheme. It's, a, it's basically a new tax, a tax on the more industrious, a tax on those who actually create the wealth for the nation, uh, basically on the, sort of the moral paradigm and the illusion and the erroneous suggestion that what Australia does will actually change the climate. What Australia does will not. Uh, but we can make life exceedingly difficult and virtue signalling and find the person who's the minority and make them pay for it. The farmers, uh, the people in the coal mining industry and on the way through, the poorest in the weatherboard and iron house who can't afford their power bill now. Now, we can, we've got to work on the realities of now. The highest power prices in the OECD is a fact now. Our biggest export is either iron ore or coal now. And uh, the vast majority of your electricity that, is, that you are using right now to watch this program comes from coal now. Now, if you're going to start reconfiguring this from the, the illustrious minds of Canberra, then watch out, because the person who's going to get hurt is you later.
Now, I just need to let our viewers know that what you're seeing there in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen are live pictures from Ahmedabad in India because we're expecting Donald Trump to step off Air Force One there at any moment on his uh, visit to India. So perhaps take, to you that, uh, take you there when that happens. But we're awaiting the uh, arrival there of uh, Donald Trump in India. Obviously, he's arrived. We're awaiting him to disembark, as they say. Now, let's get back to you, Barnaby Joyce. You've talked about the yeah. difficulties they here. They usually take about three weeks to get off those planes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, especially with his hair. It'd take, it'd take a bit of work. Uh, now, let's... Um, Get back to 2050, net zero by 2050. Uh, we'd all have to be in agreement. Even proponents would have to agree that there's an enormous amount of detail and reform, uh, as they would call it, needed in a whole vast array of industries in order to get there. How can it be that coalition governments, Liberal Nationals governments in New South Wales in particular, but also in South Australia, have signed up, have put up this target and have signed up to it? Oh, because, you know, it's a glib reference to uh, a preference desire in the inner su suburbs, which they think is attached to uh, getting into power, trying to get green preferences. But, you know, th th this is an, also an illusion. If, do, do you think the Greens are actually ever going to preference us? I mean, they're, they're not. Uh, what you are going to do is use a minority to drive an economic agenda that's really going to create massive problems for you. I, I haven't seen any government saying, well, as we get away from fugitive emissions by closing down all the coal mines, this, these are the jobs, the actual jobs you're going to get and where you're going to get them. They can't say that because they don't know. And when they say, well, we're going to get rid of this amount of the cattle herd and the dairy herd, they can't actually say, well, uh, I don't know what's going to happen to the price of beef in the shop or how we get these export dollars that we have then lost. Um, and and they, don't, they seem to be oblivious to the idea that, um, that the world is on the same sort of, uh, you know, that, that they, they, they torture themselves in this moral conundrum like we do. They, they don't. Brazil won't care when they take over our beef but, exports. But, but let's get back, back to... Won't care but, sure, but let's get back to these policies. And what, what on earth is the situation where, you know, you're a Nationals MP, you've got a Nationals party in government uh, with the Liberals in New South Wales, and they've signed up, mm. they said, net zero, 20... 50 deal. Have the National Party let down the country by having a state government actually sign up to uh, a, 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 a carbon emissions target that could be incredibly expensive and dislocating to deliver? Well, as you know, uh, there are a few issues. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm mates with them, but there's quite a few issues with my state colleagues that I disagree with and on a whole range of issues. And In fact, in some issues, I'm, uh, instances, I'm an absolute pariah to them, and I accept that, but I, I'm going to talk the truth, uh, basically as a farmer and an accountant, and try to uh, tell people what the economic effect is to them and have a real eye to the people... The poorest people live in our electorates. They live in the little villages and little towns, and they're not the quiet people. They're the invisible ones. Will you lobby? We will you lobby have... this New South Wales Nationals though to rescind that target? Do you think the New South Wales government should well, think... get rid of that policy, reverse it? Well, I think that it, you know you have to honestly answer how you're going to get there and, and honestly tell people what the costs of it are. Are you willing to say to people if you lose your largest export, well, this is the hospital you will not get, these are the increase in the pensions that won't happen, this is the school that won't happen, this is the road that won't be fixed, because that is the price you will pay because of our loss of income. You, you've just, if you don't do that, you, you're just living in this sort of uh, fairyland nirvana and just shows you sort of dis disassociated from the facts, the facts of your decision. So the New you South know, Wales you, you, Coalition you, you, Government is living in a fairyland nirvana? Well, I, I, some of their economic policies, if that's what they wish to do and they can't show a path to it, then what else could you say? If you can't... If you can't and that's what the Labor Party can't do. They, it's this sort of mystical statement, you know, we're going to have zero emissions. That's an equation. It means everything you reduce by any increase is going to be offset somewhere, somehow, by something. And if you look at the, you know, just... And they talk about, you know, some of these statements they use. I was reading one guy from who's from the uh, sort of Environment Centre at ANU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 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 but I, 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 I want to hear from we, you about the New South Wales Coalition Government. Well, not, just, not, you know, I, I want to know about I've them. The, that, yep. I've said the economic policy is, is wrong. And it, it's misinformed and it's dishonest by reason that it doesn't give a clear path and clear costing of what it actually amounts to. It's just like saying we're going to reduce carbon emissions by only closing down three lanes on the Sydney Harbour Bridge. I mean, that would work. It'll certainly reduce carbon emissions. You could also close down a couple of you know, tunnels and that would work. You could, I suppose, you could pick, I don't know, the road to Parramatta and shut it down and... Um, 
uh, make sure that you know uh, people remove half the pets from their houses. You could do that, but are you prepared to accept the economic consequences? And this idea that I oh, would never do that because of the political the political effect on us. So what we'll do is just bung it on the people out in the regional areas and see if they want to chew it chew it up and. And it does not only affect farmers, you know, this is the basis of the economy of our towns, of our jobs, you know, when someone's got to bell the cat and <laughs> maybe even get rid of the cat out of the house to, right. to tell people the honest truth. I want to give you a chance to react to something that Anthony Albanese said uh, just half an hour or so ago in his exclusive mm. interview with Kieran Gilbert. Here's what Anthony Albanese said that. about the costs of inaction. He says we've already seen the costs of climate policy inaction. Have a look. We saw a bit of the costs of inaction over the bushfire season. When we lost 33 lives, when we lost over 3,000 homes, when we lost 12 million hectares of land, when we have... Who knows what the cost is? What we know is that the cost of that season certainly won't be $2 billion that the government talks about. Is he blaming the coalition for death and destruction? That's outrageous. You, you, you're gra grabbing a tragedy and a personal tragedy in people's lives and using it to score a political point for your own purposes by reason of a, a dopey announcement that you haven't thought through. I mean, are we, is he, I think you'll find there's some serious reports out there that said that the bushfires have got a lot to do with fuel load, they've got a lot to do with a whole range of items, and to blame them on so-called climate change is, is, is mis completely misleading. Uh, it's raining now. There are floods in certain areas. So is that also... Is that, are we also responsible for that? How about the temperature this morning? Are we responsible for that? I mean, it's, the, the actions in Australia are not responsible for anything. We have no effect... In Australia, we have no effect on the climate. Zero. Zero. There is not one reasonable... There is not a peer-reviewed report in the world that would say the emissions of Australia have any effect. Even the, even the most, you know, strident uh, environmentalists, if they're competent and skilled... Uh, in, in, the, in, the, in sort of the oversight of, the, of a report, they would not suggest for one second that Australia has any effect on the climate by itself whatsoever. So what Mr Albanese said there was mischievous or a lie. Barnaby Joyce, I do need to move on. Uh, I want to ask you, you, you're putting a private member's bill, you, you, you've put it into the parliament yep. to change the way we elect senators. Uh, rather than just mm -hmm. have 12 senators per state, you want to broke it up into regions, effectively electorates uh, in each state, so that you're guaranteed senators from the regions. Interesting idea, but no hope of getting anywhere. Uh, well, why not, uh, Chris? You know, let's look at what we have. We have 12 senators per state elected as one electorate. And it says in Chapter 1, I think, Part 2, Clause 7, that, they, that an act of parliament, not a referendum, an act of parliament could break that uh, into regions or by, you know, by choice of the parliament. And then you'd have two senators per region. And two senators per region would mean those senators would have a constituency and in the remoter uh, regional areas, as our lower house seats, the house representative seats are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, would have a greater capacity for people to be proximate to their, an elected representative. And seeing our system is based on what they call the West Washington system, Westminster for the House of Representatives and Washington for the Senate. Why is it that New York can have two senators, but Adelaide has 11? I'll tell you what, that would fix the Senate to just shrink it, just have six per state uh, and it would be a lot better. But interesting idea, and we'll come back to that one later on. I know you've got support from uh, Bob Catter already for that reform. Uh, thanks for joining us, Barnaby. You're welcome, Chris.